The latest release of Adobe Character Animator just came out, and this is one of the biggest releases we have ever done. Uh, it's so big, in fact, that we've made four dedicated video tutorials towards some of the bigger features, and that's keyframes, uh, cameras, triggerable audio, and the rigging issues panel. But there's a lot of other extra features too, little UI improvements, uh, workflow optimizations, new features like motion lines, lip sync preferences, stuff like that. So that is what this video is going to go over. In animation, we tend to exaggerate a lot. When someone loves something, for example, it's not uncommon for a heart to pop over their head and their eyes bulge and their jaw drops. The same can be true of motion. To get a sense of motion, sometimes animators will add extra lines to give a sense of things moving around really quickly. So we've added that as a potential option for your characters in this latest version of Character Animator. There's a new behavior down here called motion lines. And if this is turned on and you tag uh, an element properly, when you move your arm, you're gonna get these little subtle lines that appear to add a little bit of motion. Now you can customize uh, these to whatever color you want to appear for as long as you want. Um, and it's a really cool, uh, nice, subtle effect that just adds a little bit of extra animated life to your character. So let's go into rig mode and see how I would set something like this up. So in uh, the right arm here, I've got a handle right here for draggable and right wrist. And that's probably where I want the lines of motion to be originating from. So I'm also gonna add this new tag over here, motion lines. I'm gonna click on that. And that is also going to tag it as the place where the lines are basically going to begin. Now I also have to add the motion lines behavior. So I'm gonna go up to my top level puppet up here and click on that. And uh, I'm gonna go to plus and down to motion lines. That's all you have to do. And now going back to record mode. And so now when I drag my hand around, I will see these lines, uh, subtle lines following my character. And I can see down here, my motion lines behavior. You can play around with all these parameters. Um, there are a bunch of options. Basically velocity threshold is going to be when the, uh, when the motion lines kick in. So if you do this to be a little bit faster, then that means things need to be moving a little bit faster for the lines to kick in. So if you want them to show up all the time, you can make this low. If you want to have a higher threshold, make this high. Um, you've got lifespan with uh, the secondary lines, if they show up or not, um, color values down here, does it fade or not. So what I would say is just play around with this depending on your character and background um, and whatever you're doing, uh, you can play around and see what makes the most sense. For most characters, I would say um, tag the left and the right hand uh, in the wrist. That's probably your best place to start, but you could add tags, uh, tagged handles wherever you want in the head to do motion there, in the feet, um, all over the place, and it can lead to some pretty awesome results. So here's a quick example of this added to a running character. So I took our Walker example puppet um, and added motion line tags here in the head and the body and the legs. And if I go over here to record mode and press left and right, now I can see the lines are kind of following him and trailing as he moves, even the bottom, the legs, it kind of curves to follow the movement um, of his legs moving back and forth. So you can see how these little additions, um, they don't have to be over the top. You can make them as you know bold as you want, but in general, I think it's better to be a little bit more subtle and reserved. And even just a subtle line is gonna add a lot of extra motion to your character. So give it a try and uh, hopefully it helps uh, with some motion. If you want to see a great working example of this on our home screen, I would check out the ninja character over here. Um, and with her, if you press the G or H keys, she'll do a punch animation and a kick animation. And you can see those motion lines really well integrated into those um, motions. And you can kind of dig into the behaviors and tags and see how it was created. So this is a great addition. It's just one of those things, yet again, uh, with like physics and other things with Character Animator, you set it up once and then you don't have to worry about it again. You just do your natural motions and animations and those additions will happen automatically uh, with your puppets. Now, one other option, if you don't want to do just the lines, let's say you want particles of some sort following your character. Well, we also have the ability to do that. So Heather here, I've added some stars to the tip of her wand. And as I drag around, notice the stars are kind of floating and following my mouse movements uh, around as well. Uh, the way you would do something like this is in your particles behavior, we've added a new option here. We used to only have these first three, but now we have one called 
track mouse. And so that is going to move and follow your mouse as you're dragging it around. Um, and you can set you know, the particle parameters just like you always can. Here I also added physics to make um, the gravity zero gravity so the particles, particles would kind of just float in the air. Um, but there's some stuff you can do to play around with that. So really quick in rig mode to show how this was set up, uh, inside uh, her wand here, I added this uh, layer, independent layer called Sparkle, and that's just this star that appears here. And then on top of that, I added two behaviors, the particles behavior and the physics behavior to get that zero gravity. And I made sure particles was set to track mouse. Lip sync is a critical part of any character animator performance. And before today, uh, if you wanted to kind of fine tune the amount of lip sync that was happening or adjust it to kind of, you know, noisy uh, environments or stuff like that, uh, you really didn't have a lot of options. Luckily, in this latest release, we are giving you a ton of lip sync preferences to make sure that your lip sync looks as good as it possibly can. So I'm going to go over here into uh, character preferences, and that's on Mac, edit preferences on PC. And if I click on the new lip sync area, I see I have several options. First is Vizim detection. So this is basically, if I roll over this, it says set the number density of Vizims generated by lip sync. So if I want to see more uh, Vizims appear, more of my mouth shapes appear, I feel like I'm not seeing enough. I'm going to move this up more towards the more side. Or alternatively, if I'm seeing too many uh, Vizims appearing, I feel like it's too chattery, I can move this down a little bit. So there's a whole spectrum here and you can you know, play around with this based on your own settings and see what makes sense. By the way, feel free to experiment because even if you, you know, mess it up and want to get back to the default, just click restore defaults down here and that's gonna move all of this stuff back to the original you know, factory settings. If I had to pick the coolest secret feature that we've added in uh, this latest release, I would say it's camera-based muting. I'm gonna turn this up. By default, this is none, but I'm gonna turn it up to about here and let's go to okay. Okay, so now I'm talking and it's working exactly as expected, but look what happens if I cover my mouth and keep talking. The lip sync is not happening. In fact, it's not moving the mouth at all. And now when I start talking again, it does it. So why is this happening? Well, this is something that we started with, we noticed in a lot of noisy environments, a conference, a live stream, uh, places where there might be a lot of background noise coming in, or um, you don't want your lip sync to, you know, basically other things in your environment uh, triggering the lip sync. So what someone decided on the team was, hey, what if we just looked at the mouth and if it's moving, we will do lip sync. And if it's not, we're not gonna do lip sync. So it's as simple as that. And so if you are doing uh, streaming or animating within an environment that might have background noises, that might have things that constantly trigger, uh, you know, wrong visims to appear, um, turn this up to the stronger side and it will help you a lot. With every release of Character Animator, we adjust the lip sync algorithm slightly and hopefully making it better and better. But if for some reason you do want to go back to an old version, um, you do have that ability here. And then audio-based muting, this is just going to basically set a threshold for um, what types of sounds we are going to turn into or try to turn into lip sync. So again, if you're in a noisy environment, lit, uh, air conditioners running in the background or you got street traffic outside, you might want to adjust this to say where the cutoff is. Um, so right now, I think by default, it's at negative 36 decibels, but you can change that, lower it, raise it, um, see whatever makes the most sense for your particular environment. So our hope is that with these new preferences, you can fine tune the lip sync in your particular microphone, your particular computer, your particular voice actor, and put it all together into something that works really well. By default, this standard setup should work for the majority of use cases, but we know there are some of you who want to tweak things and get it 100% perfect, and hopefully these options will get you there. We've added a ton of new uh, additions to the home screen in Character Animator, and you can always get to it by just clicking the home icon up here. That's a new addition. It used to say start, but now it's got a nice little icon up there. And uh, some of the highlights here are a completely redone new interactive beginner tutorial where uh, Betty is auditioning various uh, character animator characters for a, a project and you get to play as them and audition as them. And it's a great little uh, interactive piece uh, and it has a lot of familiar faces if you've used character animator for a while. So if this is your first time using character animator, I would highly recommend starting with this cartoon. Um, and even if you're an advanced user, it's fun to watch kind of these uh, old characters. You'll finally hear what Red Monster's voice sounds like. So um, check it out. 
In addition, there are a bunch of extra recording lessons. Um, this is done with Rosini the Wizard, and he will kind of walk you through the basics of recording with multiple characters or keyframes or scene settings or all this other stuff. And so it's just a bunch of short self-contained tutorials to teach you the basics of recording and editing and uh, learning all the character animator has to offer there. And as usual, we've got a bunch of new characters down here that are free example puppets for you to use and learn uh, from however you want. And you can always get more by clicking the see more uh, button up here in the upper right corner. And that will take you to a website with many more characters. And while we're here, I wanted to highlight a few UI changes we've made to hopefully make your workflows a little bit easier. Um, the first thing is this top bar up here. It's about twice the size that it used to be. It used to be very, very thin, and it was hard to kind of pinpoint and click between your modes. Now it's a lot easier. You've got a home uh, icon here, and then when you want to go to rig mode, click rig, and record, and stream. Now these are still considered workspaces. So if I wanted to add a new workspace, um, I can still go to window workspace and save as new workspace call this whatever I want, and it's going to appear up here in my workspaces uh, area. So you still have the full customization like you always had. Um, if I wanna move these panels around in whatever configuration I want and save it, it's just a little bit cleaner, friendlier way to get to those. And over here on the right, we do have the share icon and clicking on this will show you all of your export options, whether you wanna export a video, make a ping sequence and wave, dynamic link to After Effects or Premiere, just render out a frame, export a puppet, your various live options, all of that stuff is here. It's basically the same menu as you have under file export. It's just a little more accessible. Next up, we wanted to make the link between character animator and the original artwork file a little bit clearer. So these characters are made in Photoshop or Illustrator. And in the past, I would say, select the character in the project panel and go to edit, uh, edit original to do that. But this is a common workflow and we wanted to make this a little bit easier. So now when you select a character, you'll notice a little Photoshop or Illustrator icon is going to appear down here. And so this just makes it really easy uh, when you have something selected here. If we know it's a PSD or AI file, we're going to show you Photoshop or Illustrator. And if it's something else like a JPEG or something, we're not sure what your default program is to open it, we're just gonna give you this little edit original icon and you can still click on it to open up whatever your default uh, editing app is there. Um, but for me, I've defaulted to using this all the time. Um, I feel like it's just one of those small things. It's, you know, a saves you a couple of clicks, but if you're doing it as often as I do, um, it's very helpful. In the last release, we added this search bar on the top of the puppet panel, which lets you filter for searching like a term like I. I'm going to see all my layers that show up that have the word I inside of them. So it makes it a little bit easier to scan through, uh, you know, more complicated puppets. Well, this has proven incredibly useful to a lot of you. So we've also added it over here in the properties panel and over here in the triggers panel. So if you have a lot of triggers or a lot of behaviors going on, this will make it really easy uh, to navigate. So for example, with the wizard, if I type in uh, position, I'm going to see uh, you know, the, the face head position strength, the transform position. So I can really quickly get between things and, and find what I'm looking for instead of having to hunt you know, in each of these, um, these behaviors for what I'm looking for exactly. If I know the term, I just search it up here and uh, it's easy to find. Same thing with the triggers over here. This character doesn't have a lot of triggers, but if it did, uh, you could do that. Now, we also added some additional functionality to the puppet panel uh, search filtering as well. So um, sometimes you may want to look for a specific tag in your character. Like in this character, I know he's got some dangles uh, in some parts of him. I know in his hair and maybe a few other places. And if I'm looking for that specific tag, what I can do now is type tag colon and then whichever tag I'm looking for. So in this case, dangle. And there you go. It's going to show me all layers, uh, all instances that have a dangle tag in it somewhere. So here's his hair left. Here, right also has a dangle, and the pendant uh, also has a dangle as well. So this makes it really easy. You know, you're kind of looking for, okay, where's my head tag? Okay, there it is. Make sure it's only in one place. Or, you know, where are all my eye tags? Um, you can type things in here and make it really easy to scan through the puppet and find all instances of specific tags. We've had the walk behavior for a few releases now. And what it does is adding a walk behavior and tagging a few things like elbow, wrist, ankle, legs, that sort of stuff will allow your character to walk to the left or the right. 
and stop stationary if you have multiple views. Um, there's a few different options here, but what we found is that walking can be pretty complicated, particularly if you're trying to make a performance and you want your character to end up on one spot exactly and trying to perform that and, and time it to everything else that's happening it can get a little confusing. Well, luckily with the addition to keyframes, there is a new option in the walk behavior that makes walking even easier. So if I go down to my walk behavior here and instead of left and right arrow keys or immediate, I go to position based, you'll notice this makes position uh, illuminate now and I can see that I've got a keyframe stopwatch over here and I can set exactly where I want uh, the positions of this character to be. So if I wanted this character to move from the left to the right, all I would have to do is set a keyframe where I want him to start. So let's do this, set that as a position. Let's have him start on the left-hand side and you'll see he's kind of walking as I move that keyframe. And then over the course of, let's say three or four seconds, I want him to move to this keyframe over here and I can drag or I can write the number um, click and type in the number that I want. So now when I play this back, look what happens. It's gonna go through and then when it hits the keyframe, it's gonna have him move from one side to the next. Now, did that feel a little slow? Probably, so I'm just gonna move the keyframes a little closer together. Let's see how this looks. There you go. So I can make these keyframes as close together or as far away as I want, and Character Animator is gonna fill in the blanks between them. So to me, this is the easiest way to do a walking uh, animation. You will be able to set exactly where you want your character to begin end and anywhere in between and character animator will fill in all the blanks without any foot sliding or anything like that so it should look as good as it possibly can. Um, personally I've started to use this for all of my walking characters and I think uh, I need to completely redo the walking tutorial because uh, everything is much better with this technique. Character animator is always automatically saving every step that you take. If you go to the history panel which we've moved uh, up here next to the project panel it used to be down next to triggers you'll see that as I scroll through here, I'll see every single change that I have made inside this particular project file. Um, in the past, we had a concept called bookmarks, and this will allow you to kind of set a marker on any one of these history steps that you could easily go back to if you wanted to make uh, changes. And we've changed the terminology and expanded that a little bit. Now we're calling this versions. So if I like where I'm at right now and I wanted to kind of experiment with some changes here in the rigging, I can just click save new version and that's gonna make a new version up here in my history panel. If I wanted to rename this, I could press enter and let's just call this uh, demo and something like that. And now as I make additional changes or even if I scroll back and go to a completely different part of my timeline um, where I'm using a completely different character, if I wanna go back to that uh, saved version state, I just click on it and it's gonna take me right back there. Now in previous versions, if you tried to do the save shortcut, uh, command S on Mac or control S on Windows, you would get a snarky comment at the bottom saying we always save and then if you kept on doing it, there were some Easter eggs about um, uh, that kept on saying different messages. In this latest version though, we wanted to make it a little more useful um, just because that kind of command is muscle memory to a lot of people uh, using Adobe products, actually any type of product out there uh, to continually save. So now if I've made a few changes and I press command S, that is gonna automatically create a new uh, version over here in my saved versions. Now I should note that this is saving all the character animator stuff. This isn't overwriting your Photoshop or Illustrator file or anything like that. So if you're making changes to those, that's a completely se separate referenced file that we're, we're dealing with. But th what this is doing is talking about the rigging inside character animator. So when you are saving versions of your character animator rigging and scenes and all your settings, that's what this is doing. So personally, I'm using this a lot for my characters. I'll get them in a good state. And if I wanna experiment with a certain you know, setting, add some new handles and uh, try to add a walk behavior or something like that, I will go ahead and make a version, experiment, and then if everything messes up, it's okay. I can just with one click, go back to that safe, safe version. Instead of saving you know, 20 different versions of a CH project file, this just lets me save one version and I have all these different things in my history panel that I can move between. All right, so that is a brief overview at some of the highlights and new features that we've added into this release. 
You can see the full list of everything that we've added if you go to this website to changes. Uh, that'll show you a full list of everything that's been added and you can dig in a little bit more there. Uh, as usual, we would love to see what you are creating with Character Animator. So please use hashtag Character Animator on social media so we can find uh, all the cool stuff that you guys are making. And uh, if you have any questions about any of these features or anything else, any problems that you run into, the best place to get help is the official Character Animator forums. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and have fun.